here we are, Dave Politis, for season five, episode seven of the Skinwalker Ranch series on the History Channel, and this is my review. For anyone who's new, who hasn't watched the last couple of episodes, I gotta tell you, Phenomicon that's coming to Vernal, Utah this summer. Everybody from Skinwalker Ranch is gonna be there, and me. <laughs> yeah. Phenomicon. You can find it, Google it, you'll find it easily. It's going to be huge. And uh, some people said, well, Dave, don't geek out when you, when you see them. I don't geek out at, over anybody. But I show respect when respect is due. And the people at the ranch deserve respect. And uh, I got to say, this episode we're going to talk about tonight is one of their top episodes ever. So hold your taters while we get to the point that we need to talk about. I'll walk you through the show and we'll talk about it. So they start the show and they start talking about the drill site in the Mesa. Thomas talks to the drill crew. They talk about uh, in 2021 the first drilling into the Mesa and they found these little metal fragments that match metal fragments that's found on the shields on the shuttles, NASA shuttles. Well, in that first, first drill, they went in 40 feet, first drilling this year, they went in 40 feet, feet hit an object, had to stop, came out. And their idea is, is put parallel drill holes in and put testing material to see what they can find out between the two drill sites. Good idea. So now they moved over and they're drilling the second hole just a few feet away. So they're setting up to do that and they move away and they start talking about the triangle again. And you know what they're gonna do. They're going to drill. I mean, they're going to shoot rockets. That's what Travis does. And he said something in this episode that I'd never heard him admit to before. He said in his career, he shot thousands of rockets. So now you understand why he likes rockets. He believes that you get a lot of data from shooting them in the sky. So I'm with him. So last week, they shot seven into this triangle area and they found a black void 100 feet up from elevation. And as they're setting up, kind of on the horizon, or a little above, they see a white orb. And they don't see it for very long, but everybody sees it on the ground. And why is this important? There's a lot of things in the world that you can't see with the naked eye. But you can see them if you have a device to look at the IR zone, infrared zone. And there's so many things around us all the time that we never see because we can't observe in that zone. But this one you could see, and they did see it with the naked eye. And then the guys, welcome some experts that are coming in and this man named Tim Anderson a laser cannon expert is going to come back and set up some of his cannons to do some more work like they did last week where they shot that seven cannons in a circle shooting straight up and last week those seven cannons all pointed to a point in the sky and now this time, they're only going to shoot one laser cannon straight up. And then they're going to shoot a rocket up through, kind of right parallel with the laser, straight up into the middle. And then they're going to scan the area with LIDAR. Handheld, terrestrial laser scan. It's called a SLAM scan, the handheld one. And they still have this giant screen set up kind of in the backdrop there. 
and they want to see if they can simulate some kind of or stimulate some kind of response from whatever this is that's above the triangle. Now that one laser is changing colors, green, purple, and just as they're getting going, they say activate the laser, laser goes on, and they look up, and the laser goes up, they're going to guesstimate 2,000 feet, and it just stops. And they all agreed, no, it's supposed to go way higher than this. But it's just stopped. Kind of like the last week where there was something between a green laser and the other lasers. So imagine that you have a laser here and a laser here, and then you have a laser on this side. It's like an object is in between this laser and these back lasers. So you can't see these lasers but you can see this laser because this laser is between whatever this is and the cameras. And then it interrupted these lasers at odd positions. They still haven't said this, but I think my theory is correct on what's going on. And I don't, now these lasers, when they go up high, they're not very far apart. So whatever this is that gets in between them isn't very dense, meaning thick. So as they're setting up, right near where the laser stops, it's illuminated very brightly, brighter than the rest of the laser, which was odd, and the guys couldn't understand this. And then simultaneously, while they're doing this, they start getting a 1.6 gigahertz signal from Homestead 2. And then Eric, Eric Bard, is always in the control room monitoring what's surrounding the area on these big screen TVs. And these TVs can see in the infrared zone, whereas we in the field, not me, but Travis and the rest of the crew cannot see. And as Eric is watching this, he says, guys, do you see out in above the mesa a bright light? All the guys are looking around and don't see anything. And then Thomas says, well, maybe the mesa is blocking us, but Eric can see it. So he says, I'll run to the top of the mesa. So he takes off and he goes running off. In the meantime, Eric's watching this object. It looks like a white orb, very bright. And it's descending very slowly. Whatever this entity is, I guarantee it knows that we're watching that in the in that room. But the guys in the field couldn't see it. None of them could. And as this is going on, Eric's watching it descend. And then Travis makes the comment, hey, this is probably being seen by Eric because he's in that infrared room and he can see on TV in the infrared that we can't. So he says to the guys that are getting ready to do this testing around the triangle, everything we have infrared, turn it on. And then at about that point, Eric who's in the room, says that thing just descended. It's out of sight now. I don't know where it went, into the ground or wherever. Nobody knew, but it was gone. And they have uh, Thomas by walkie-talkie up on top of the mesa, and he says, I never saw anything. So then uh, Travis says, okay, let's shoot a rocket. And I want that rock. He says, I want that rocket shot at right at the top of that laser Whatever's stopping it, I want it shot right into that. Okay. So the rocket launches, starts off right next to the beam, and then veers off and does a couple of like S turns and disappears. 
And Travis says, it's possible the, the rocket malfunctioned. He goes, I'll admit it. Maybe it did. But he says, I've done this thousands of times and I've never had this happen. But maybe it was a bad rocket. But something, and he said, something is blocking that laser. And then they focus in real tight at the end of the laser. And at the beginning, it looked like there were two balls of bright light right at the end of the laser. Those two balls changed into what I could best describe as two X's, one below each other, right at the end of the laser. It was predominant. You could see it. And then the laser ended. So Travis says, let's try a second rocket. Second rocket set up, shot into the same area, essentially did the same thing as the first rocket. Veered away, wouldn't go anywhere near the end of that laser beam. And that's when Travis said, okay, <laughs> we're out of rockets now. Something obviously doesn't want us to hit that, whatever it is. And it's controlling it. And he said he had never had this happen, except at the ranch. So the next morning, they go back to drilling in the mesa. And they're on that second hole. And they said that they were they were drilling, I showed them drilling at about 130 feet in. So in the last hole, they only got to 40 feet. This one, they were in 130 feet. They made a lot more progress. And then it hit something. And it didn't veer up. It hit it and they applied more pressure and something broke. And it was either the drill rod or the drill head and they didn't know. And it was gonna be quite an effort to get those things back out. They'd have to go in and excavate it to take it out. And that's kind of where they left the entire drill situation. But they did say that this area, area that they're drilling into has this dome device. But around it, it honestly looks like something hit this area and broke up and it's a debris field around there. And Travis was considering whether that first drill that went in hit some debris because they weren't even to the area where this dome device should be at. So what happened? I, I could tell they're very perplexed, but they're also frustrated because this drill unit that they're working on penetrating that mesa was like twice the size of the previous drill. So now they go back into the command center. Now friends, I want you, I'm gonna take a deep breath right here. I want you to grab an almond croissant that's one of Dave's favorite. Cup of coffee, hot chocolate, some water. I want you to sit back, put your feet up, and indulge. Because what I'm going to talk to you about, what they found, is huge. And I get a lot of comments every week. Oh, you know what? This is all phony. This is all baloney. Hey, you guys, I'll shut off and leave. I don't want to hear your comments because I know what they're doing out there and I know the devices that they're using are credible. And they have these experts come in. You may think that Prometheus could get Travis and Eric, all the regulars to lie, but you're not gonna get the people that own these companies to lie, no matter what kind of money you give them. I'm sorry, these aren't paid actors, these are just business owners. So as we go on, they're in the command center and they're reviewing the data from what happened in the triangle. The rockets, they were walking the area with LIDAR. They flew a, a drone through with LIDAR. 
And Eric showed this ball of light descending. They had it on tape. And it was the only thing that was visible on that IR spectrum. And he brought up a very good point that I've talked to, to you about it before. If it wasn't for the device that Eric was looking at, nobody would ever know that was there. But it's because he was sitting in the seat watching that they found it. So all the time that the guys are in the field and nobody is looking at the sky in it with an IR, these things could be all around them and you'd never know. So Caleb, the security guy, he was walking through the field in a kind of semi-circle from point to point with a handheld LiDAR unit. And as he's walking around, they're trying to pick up things above the ground in this area while he's holding this unit about like this walking around. The, the owner of the company and the person who designed this LiDAR device was stunned. He said, guys, this is LiDAR. It does not go below ground. And what I'm showing you is all below ground. This unit right here, this LiDAR unit, picked up data points 200 feet down in the ground. He said, that is impossible. So I sat there during one of the, they have some real long commercial breaks. And I'm thinking to myself, in the farthest stretches of my imagination, I have no idea what kind of technology or intellect or physics manipulation could make that unit do that. It's bizarre. I would have loved to be in the room with those guys and just hear them talk this out. Because the, the show moved along pretty quick and you didn't get to hear all of the intimate details of this. But as Caleb walked around and picked up all this all this ground data and everything in the middle when you look at the data that was collected underground from up above it looked like a donut with data points all the way around the outside and nothing in the middle now from from some of you that have been observing this show for a long time and their show, you know they've picked up these donut looking entities in the past. This is important, really important. In 2022, they did a LIDAR scan of the triangle. And I don't know if you remember, but there was like a reddish yellowish color with a void in the middle of the triangle. And that was above ground. This data point was below ground. So now you have above donut, below donut. And then they also had one where they did one up in the air three years ago and they had the same thing. So they have a donut in the sky, a donut on the ground and a donut under the ground. Friends, this is super important. Travis made it a point that we understand. This appears to be a traversable wormhole because this area where these donut looking things are happening They've had energy spikes in them ever since they got there. As well as UAPs disappearing in the air above this point. 
This is huge. Now, back in the days before Mr. Bigelow owned the property, the ranchers there saw things that were that they did not believe were from this earth. Giant, giant wolves. They saw some the Bigelow team saw something that looked like a Bigfoot. Another team member of Bigelow saw something that looked like a dinosaur. And the theories were is that a traversable wormhole going between different dimensions can explain why these entities come to Earth for a short period of time. And then maybe somehow, we don't understand, are picked up and sent back. This is so mega huge. And Travis said, folks, nobody has ever seen this. We are doing something that nobody has ever done. Now they had a laser scan of terrestrial data and this is the part I'm speechless. I'm speechless. So this laser, laser scan of the terrestrial area around the triangle while the rockets are going off, while the laser beam is going on. So in my big budget graphics work for you guys, I did this. Now, this is the laser beam right in the middle, this dot, okay? This is the area that they walked, this whole area. And in the middle, that's where the center of the donut is. Now, as they scanned all this, they downloaded, it takes days to download all this data. What they see is they see, it. the best I could describe it to you is like a petrified tree at two points on the outside of this area. And it, it would remind you of very, very, very tight lines starting at ground level and going straight up into the air. So tight that it all kind of looks like a tree. And then all the way around the circle are lines not quite as tight as this or this, but they completely surround this area. Now, you're still with me. So this is like looking down at the triangle area. So Travis says, well, where do those lines go in the sky? Well, that's a brilliant question, Sherlock. And here comes the data. So this is looking sideways at this circle. So all of these lines in this circle came to a point came to a point where the laser stopped. And friends, it looked like a triangle when you looked at it from the side. All of these lines came to a point at the very top. It was bizarre. So, the pillars, there's one here and there's one at Homestead too. And as Travis described it, he said it was almost like these pillars were holding up the rest of these lines at the triangle. The triangle and the laser came to a point 2,000 feet up in the sky. Travis said that he had seen crazy things in his life. He said many. He goes, I've never ever seen anything as crazy as this and this. 
And then they had a discussion about wormholes, how what they just saw and what they just experienced and what the data just presented is ultra remarkable. Now, if it was just Travis and the team doing all of this, I would have some room, some wiggle room to say, okay, maybe it was, this was all uh, fabricated. But as I told you, there are like three or four companies that came together to do small parts of all of this research in this event. One shot the laser beam. One did the LIDAR. One did a drone. And then they had other people doing other things, like watching the IR zone, etc. And then, above all that, they had high-speed cameras, etc., that apparently didn't catch anything in this episode. Now, why am I excited? Somebody made a very, very <laughs> demeaning comment on the last video I did about Skinwalker Ranch. And they said, well, Politis is an idiot. Uh, he's, uh, he can't even explain why he's doing these Skinwalker Ranch episodes. That would be inappropriate and it would be 1000% incorrect. Now, I did a show called Vanished on the History Channel. Two hour special, you can watch it on Amazon. I don't get any money for it. History Channel owns it. Part of that show is it highlighted many of my cases, my missing 411 cases, and we visited a physicist from NASA. Yes, a physicist from NASA, who knew me well. <laughs> I didn't know how, but he did. And he talked to me about my cases on and off camera, and he said, Dave, you know when you talk about people that are standing, like small kids standing right next to their parents, and one second they're there and one second they're not. He goes, how do you explain that? I said, I can't. And there's too many of those incidents to ignore them and say, oh, well, you know, the people got their, got their timing off or they just got distracted, etc." And he says, no, this is off camera. He goes, do you know what traversable wormhole is or portal or multi-dimensions? I go, oh yeah, I know about that. And he goes, so there's a group of us that work for NASA. He said, Dave, we talk about this all the time. We talk about these issues all the time. And he said, the man that disappeared on Mount Shasta that you covered, I said, yeah. He goes, what other explanation do you have for him disappearing on the side of a mountain? Well, there's no trees. He's above tree level. And it's been decades since he disappeared. Nothing, his cleats, his walking sticks, his metal framed backpack, nothing has ever been found that should have been found. I said, I don't have an explanation. And he said, well, I would say that he probably walked through a wormhole. Now friends, that was a physicist from NASA. So, it's not me saying it. It's somebody way smarter than me. A physicist employed by our government. The same this. And he's saying that all the physicists on the team talk about these things all the time. So, the people out there that don't understand why I am looking at Skinwalker Ranch, it's because that is the only location in the world where they are taking this topic to a point where we as outsiders can look in and see what they're doing. I definitely want to understand the science behind it. I definitely want to understand the danger involved. One of the things that I asked the uh, physicist, his name was John Brandenburg, 
I said, nobody ever sees these people disappear. It's almost as though when somebody takes their eyes off, then something happens. And he said, Dave, there's intellect behind this. It's obvious. Something is controlling it. And we at NASA are studying that exact point. Because we would like to understand how to control these as well. Bingo. So what may be happening with missing 411 disappearances may not be one blatant answer. It may be many answers. As with mutilated animals at the ranch, nobody's ever seen them taken. No. But other anomalies have happened in front of the researchers at that ranch that fit the wormhole portal idea. And they happened right next to the, or into the triangle area. So I really don't care if somebody doesn't believe it. If you don't believe it, then I don't understand why you're watching or why you're even listening to me. But from my contact with the Bigelow team and my observations of what Brandon Fugal is doing with his team, ultra credible, unbelievable research that is going to lead to some discoveries that are shake up our world. Yeah, I was jacked up about this one. I enjoyed it a lot. Definitely one of their top episodes. So you can follow me on Twitter at David Politis at CanAm, like Canadian American, CanAm Missing, David Politis, P A U L I D E S, at CanAm Missing. You can get our movies all on Amazon Missing 411, Missing 411 The Hunted, and Missing 411 The UFO Connection. And you can get my books, all my missing 411 books at our online store at NA, like North America, nabigfootsearch.com. Thanks for being here. Can't wait for the next one. Polite us out.